Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is thirteenth lecture of this dynamic programming series, part one. In this lecture, we are going to study about longest palindromic substring problem of dynamic programming. So the problem is, we are given a string of length n, and we have to find and return the longest palindromic substring size. So you are given a string of length n, and you have to return the size of the longest substring, which is also palindrome. So if it, uh, the expected complexity is n square, if we look at the example a b b c b b c a, the answer is five because you can see b b c b c uh, b b c b b. This substring is actually of length five and is also a palindrome. That is why the highest size of a substring, which is actually a palindrome, is five. There also exists a palindrome of length four, which is c b b c also exists palindrome of length 3 bcb length 2 bb and all of the one length substrings are always palindrome so highest length palindrome exists as substring in the string is of length 5 that is why the result is equals to 5 so this is the problem with, with expected complexity and square and we are going to solve this using dynamic programming of course so let's look at a very basic but important observation that will help us to solve this problem. So if, if there exists a string of length n which is a palindrome, then the substring of length n minus 2 which lies completely inside the string is also a palindrome. Now what do I mean by that? See, here is an example of length 6, uh, length six palindrome. ABC CBA is a palindrome of length 6. So what it says is that if uh, there is a palindrome of length n, then the uh, substring of length n minus 2, which lies completely inside, which lies completely inside, I mean, uh, by that I mean is this substring. You remove the, la uh, the first and the last character, and then you, uh, what you are left with is a substring of size n minus 2, and that is what I'm talking about. If this is a palindrome of length 6, then this completely inside substring must also be a palindrome. If this BCCB is not a palindrome, then the actual string cannot be a palindrome. So if the actual string of length n is actually a palindrome, then the last two characters must match. Last two, I mean the first and the last character must match and the inside of which must also be a palindrome. So this is, as you can see, a very, very basic observation, but this is what is going to help us solve this problem and formulate our DP solution for this problem. So how we will approach this problem uh, is simple. We are given a string of length 8. So we will create a DP or array of size 9 cross 9. So that I have indices from 0 to 8, 0 to 8 row and 0 to 8 columns. Now dp of ij would represent a substring of length i which ends at j so if i show you the uh, what dp of 24 represents uh, 24 means a substring of length 2 which ends at 4 so substring of length 2 which ends at 4 is bc so you see uh, this substring bc is of length 2 and ends at position 4 right so if i if i were to talk about the substring uh, the cell say 38 so 38 means a substring of length 3 which ends at position 8 so you see bca is actually that substring which is of length 3 and ends at position 8 so dp of ij is equals to 1 if that substring is actually palindrome otherwise it is going to be 0 so let's start by filling this dp array we'll start by filling the first zeroth and the first row by one see if uh here we are talking about the empty substring an empty substring is always a palindrome so that's why the zeroth row is filled with one here uh substring of length one which ends at one that means i'm talking about a only so every substring of length one is actually a palindrome that is why every substring of length is represented as 1 here in dp array so dp of 1 1 which means 
substring of length 1 which ends at 1 is of course a single character substring which means that is a palindrome similarly for 1 2 1 2 means i'm talking about this b and that is a palindrome similarly every single substring of length 1 is a palindrome that is why the whole zeroth and the first row is filled with 1 because all of those substrings are actually a palindrome that is why they are filled with 1 now let's start filling by all of the length 2 substring we see the length 2 substring the first length 2 substring from left to right is ab so it is of length 2 which ends at 2 so we will start from 2 2 that is here so let me fill this this row by myself and then i'll be explaining how i did fill this row from 3 2 onwards now see 2 2 which means a uh, substring of length 2 uh, length 2 which ends at 2 which means i'm talking about ab ab is not a palindrome that is why it's filled with 0 how am i filling this value i'll be telling you in a, in a moment when i'll be explaining you how will be uh, how we'll be filling the third fourth and fifth row now uh, we see 2 3 is filled with 1 which means the uh, substring of length 2 which ends at 3 is actually a palindrome so we see the substring of length 2 which ends at 3 is actually bb and we see bb is a palindrome that is why filled with 1 similarly 2 6 is also filled with 1 2 6 which means this this bb again this bb is a, actually a palindrome that is why filled with 1 the rest are filled with 0 now you might wonder how did we fill this row uh, let me explain you how we did fill row 2 uh, that will be filled exactly same way as row 3 4 or any other row so let's let me tell you how we will be filling every single row so we'll start from 3 3 because we are talking about length 3 substring so it must end at least uh, on position 3 so 3 3 is a substring of length 3 which ends at 3 that means i'm talking about a b b to see whether this is a palindrome or not first the observe remember about the observation that we made a string is a palindrome if the first and the last character match and the inside substring is actually a palindrome right so we are talking about 3 3 so the first and the last character do not match because the last character is b first character is a so of course since the first and the last character doesn't match so this this substring cannot be a palindrome that is why we will be directly filling zero now let's talk about, uh, let's talk about 3 4 you see 3 4 is actually this substring b b c again the first and the last character do not match it cannot be a palindrome so filled with zero now 3 5 3 5 is i guess uh, this b c b we see the first and the last character match so this can be a palindrome now we have to see for the substring which is strictly inside it and is of length 3 minus 2 which is n minus 2 as explained in that observation so currently we are checking for length 3 substring so the inside uh, substring uh, inside of this is of length 1 substring which we have to see whether that is a palindrome or not because uh, the observation that we have seen a string is a palindrome if the first and the last character match and the inside substring which is of length n minus 2 must also be a palindrome now here first and the last character are matching so all we are left to check whether the completely inside substring which is of length n minus 2 here n is equals to 3 so we will be going for a substring of length 1 and which is completely inside and we have to see that is a palindrome or not we see uh, the inside of this is actually of length one substring and we know length one substring is always a palindrome but that is not how we check we go for cell i minus two because currently we are looking at i i length sub uh, substring that is why the inside substring must be of length i minus two so we go to the row i minus two and also that substring must end at j minus one position so we will go at cell i minus 2 j minus 1 and we see that okay that one length string which ends at position 4 is actually a palindrome because at cell i minus 1 j uh, i minus 2 j minus 1 we are having 1 so that means the substring which is completely inside is also a palindrome because cell i minus 2 j minus 1 is actually 1 that means this whole substring this 3 5 is actually a palindrome that is why we will be filling 1 here again how did we check it first we check for the first and the last character do they match or not so we see first and the last character match now we have to check for the inside substring inside substring is of length 
i minus 2 currently we are checking for length i and we have to check for the inside substring which is of length i minus 2 that is why we will be going to i minus 2 row the row number with i minus 2 so we will be checking in this row but that substring which is of length i minus 2 must end at position j minus 1 right so that is why we will be going in in the cell i minus 2 j minus 1 to check whether that inside substring is a palindrome or not and this cell will tell you that so what is happening here you don't actually have to look for substring itself that okay this is a palindrome or not since this is bcb so this must be palindrome no we are not checking that we are going inside we are only checking in the dp array which is a constant time operation all you have to do is go to uh, go to cell i minus 2 j minus 1 and see whether that is 0 or 1 if it is 1 that means the inside substring is actually a palindrome that means you can fill 1 here otherwise 0 so we see here that is the case that is why we are filling 1 now let's go for the substring 36 36 uh, is a substring which ends at position 6 and is of length 3 so we are talking about cbb certainly the first and the last character do not match so we'll be filling 0 similarly for every single string of length through uh, length 3 is actually not a palindrome that is why we are filling 0 0 0 here now let's go for length 4 so we'll be starting from 4 4 now we are talking about the substring of length 4 which ends at 4. Certainly the last, uh, the first and the last character A and C do not match so we will be filling 0 here. here. Now 4, 5. Uh, this is position 5 I guess. Yes. So first and the last character BB match. Now we have to see for this inside substring. So we will go at in the cell I minus 2 J minus 1. We see the inside substring is not actually a, a palindrome because here in the dp array we are having zero at that cell i minus 2 j minus 1 of course we can see that bc is not actually a palindrome that is why here we are having zero so since the inside string uh, inside string is not actually a palindrome so the overall string cannot be the palindrome that is why we will be filling zero here now let's go for four six four six is this uh and get this position so bc bb again the first and the last character match but inside is not a palindrome which you can confirm by going to cell i minus 2 j minus 1 again here we are having zero so that is why here also will be filling zero now 47 47 which means c bbc certainly this is a palindrome and to confirm it first and the last character match and then we'll go for i minus 2 j minus 1 here we are having one so of course this is a palindrome of length 4 similarly for last one it would be 0 you can confirm it yourself so now if someone uh, this dp array is helpful to answer many queries for example someone asks you uh, someone may ask you how many palindrome exist palindromic ex uh, substring exist in this string with length 2 so you can go in the second row and check for how many ones are there there are two ones which means there are two substring of length 2 which are palindrome and we can confirm it by looking at 2 3 which is this substring and 2 6 which is actually this substring bb someone may ask you how many length 4 substrings are there in this string which are palindrome of course you can go to fourth row and check how many ones are there there is only one one which is at cell 4 7 4 7 which means there is four length substring ending at 7 which is this bc uh, c bbc so this way you can tell how many substrings are there of length i which are also palindrome so after you have filled this dp array you can you can answer very easily what is the maximum length substring which is also a palindrome in this string I'll be leaving that as an exercise. If I show you the code for this problem, of course, I'm not filling the rest of the rows. This is because I'll be filling it using this code. So you see, we are having a DP array and also character array. I'll be reading the string as character array. I'm taking input N and then reading the string. After that, you see the zeros and the first row I'm initializing with one as explained here because all of the zero and one length strings or substrings are always palindrome that is why here i'm filling the zeroth and the first row with one this is pre-processing phase after that we will start filling from second to nth row 
each time starting the column from uh, j is equals to i to n and if the last two character match so ar of j is equals to ar of j minus i plus 1 which means we are checking for the last two characters if the last two characters match and also dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 is equals to 1 that means the dp of ij will also be 1 otherwise it will be 0 and here i'm doing nothing just printing the complete dp array so if we take the same example this is of length 8 and the input is a bbc bbc a so you can see okay just a second huh. the first two rows i filled with one that is why uh, I, I filled the complete zeroth and the first row by one that is why even here i have filled with one after that you can see one double zero one double zero here the second row the third row is one three times zero the fourth row is one double zero uh, this is the fourth row right uh, the, here is the fourth row one zero and this is the fifth row one double zero and six seven and eight are zero which means there is no six uh, six seventh and eight there are there are no eight lengths of uh, palindrome there are no seven or there are no six length palindrome highest we have is uh five length palindrome so looking at this dp array you can actually find out what is the maximum length substring which also exists as a sub uh, as a palindrome in this so uh, in this given string the overall complexity is n square because all we are doing is running a loop uh, or a nested n square loop so the overall complexity is n square so this was all for this lecture if you have any doubt or query of course you can ask on the article that i have created for this course on discuss.codeshift.com link of that article i'll be putting in the description of this video so thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you